Leader of a revolution and leading a country initially shuttered from the outside world. Then a giant raises its sights and the next generation cements China's place on the global stage. But the helmsman of today has far greater ambitions to shape that stage. President Xi Jinping in the limelight at the recent BRIC summit of emerging superpowers and big messages. An expansion of the bloc to strengthen China's voice on global economics and potentially swell the number of China-friendly countries if Beijing decides to move against Taiwan. And China making clear its determination to be an indispensable player in diplomacy around Ukraine. A China expert in no doubt about the significance of Xi Jinping, a president with a clear global strategy. Beijing look at this, consider the international order are largely decided by the Western economies back to 1945. And itself felt in the no longer really suit the purpose for China, in the longer really suit for the purpose of the global south. And hence China would be interested in shaping this international order, not just according to China's preferences, but also according to the preferences of many of the developing, large-sized developing countries, for example, India as well. So at the moment, I think we're now in a very critical juncture on the one hand, you have the old guard of the G7 and desperately want to preserve the old international order. Whereas on the other hand, China and plus other emerging economies are hoping to bring more chairs on the table. A faded symbol of Britain above a once grand London address and a sign of China's ambitions that it wants to make its UK home in the old royal mint. The project to move the Chinese embassy here is on hold after a row over planning, much to the annoyance of Beijing. But buying this iconic and large London site is an unmistakable signal that Beijing sees itself as a major global player. Keep them at a distance in light of China's human rights record, says a powerful wing of the Conservative Party. But Rishi Sunak has decided to engage. Diplomacy Beijing style and the first visit in five years by a senior British minister who had a message for critics back home. Well, I, I fundamentally disagree with those voices, uh, including people I regard as, as good friends, who feel that we should disengage from China. I don't think that is a, a credible uh, option. China thinks that this is their century. This is the century in which they become the world's biggest economic power and they hope the main pol leading political power, the superpower, the future superpower. I think President Xi is the most significant Chinese leader since Deng Xiaoping. A former UK national security adviser is in no doubt about the rise of China and the need for a relationship with eyes wide open. There is a lot to object to about China's policies. Unfair trade practices, theft of intellectual property, human rights records, behaviour towards Hong Kong and Taiwan, support of Russia on Ukraine. But this is 20% of the world's population, the world's second biggest economic power, crucial to any progress we're going to make on climate change, and we have important commercial economic relations with China. So what I think Rishi Sunak is trying to do is basically have it both ways. We need to be able to continue to trade with China at current levels, or perhaps do even better. And so we have to be able to say our piece on human rights, on Hong Kong, on Ukraine, on um, China's policies, on current policies on climate change, and so on. Forging a new approach in difficult diplomatic waters. A clear move by Rishi Sunak, but unease amongst core supporters.